guys, let's see. Let's see. Maybe three. Is this three? I don't even know if it, this is three. <laughs> the third time or the fourth time. So, again, um, I didn't want to come on. I actually saw someone on, and it's important that I say this part. So, if you all caught, like, the first part of the first four videos, I'm repeating it. Um, but I, I didn't want to come on. And I saw someone post, you know, that they had been crying. Um, they were afraid and they were uncertain. And it's not the first post that I've seen with those words on it. Um, it's not the first post that I've seen where someone was crying out for help or, you know, just letting the world know, the world of social media know that a lot of everything that is transpiring is overwhelming. It just so happened when I saw this particular post, I just felt led uh, to come on. A part of a huge part of my assignment is to help women in particular step into new spaces of possibility um, to up level their beliefs, um, to create futures bigger than their past. And so um, when when high times of emotions and people feeling hopeless are in the atmosphere, I'm really, really sensitive to that, really, really sensitive to that. Um, but I want to say, before we go too much further, um, one, pray that the internet stay on because it's been clicking off, so y'all pray to, you know, we agree, maybe, you know, Jesus will be a mix. But um, I want to say that it is okay to cry during a time like this. Uh, earlier today, when my daughter came in the room, I just, you know, I lost my ability to control my emotions and I cried and I hated to do that during a time like this in front of her because I don't want her to worry you know I'm restricting what she can actually see on social media and limiting you know what she is exposed to by my conversation um, but I just want to tell you that it's okay to cry during a time like this. There's a lot going on. Um, we are not only dealing with um, the recent protests and um, riots, we're also dealing with uh, COVID-19, uh, stay at home, uh, the, the economy of the world. And we're dealing with things that are way before this here it's just like everything is just all coming at one time so it's okay if you feel that you need to you know shed a tear and and get it out you know release whatever it is that you know you're feeling um i realize some people hey kirsten dear how are you uh some people feel hopeless during this time um some people don't know what they can do uh, to, to be of help during this season. Some people don't know what to say, right? And I'm gonna sit there for just one moment and try not to go too far left because um, the fact that some people don't know what to say is a very sensitive issue for me because I'm seeing so many people and maybe they mean well, but so many people are bullying people on social media, making them feel less than, making them feel they aren't worthy and different things of that nature because they are not responding the same way that, that they would want them to. Um, one of the best things that has ever happened for me other than me giving my life to Christ is me getting delivered from people. I'm gonna say that one more time. One of the best things that has ever happened to me is me getting delivered from people. Because one of the things I realize is that not everybody's going to do life the same. Not everybody's going to handle things the same way. Um, some people in this particular season that we have with like the riots going on and the protests and you know everybody having emotions about what's happened um, in our country uh, during this time. Listen, first of all, everyone is not graced for the same thing. I'm gonna say that one 
more time. Everyone is not graced for the same thing. Number two, everyone isn't even knowledgeable enough to do some of the things that some people are, I'm going to use the word bullying, um, and they may not mean to be, but it is that is what it is, where people are feeling um, as if they if they don't speak out on social media they're being um looked down on or um I, i'm not gonna go too too far into it because it's really sensitive for me because it keeps you know like running through my timeline and um and i got something else that i want to say and i'm just like should i say that but anyway because this is supposed to be about self-care um but i'm sharing that it's a um, something in here. Um, I'm sharing that because people are just feeling obligated on top of a whole lot of other stuff that they have going on. And I just know that everyone doesn't have the same assignment. Um, one of the things about us as people, we tend to have um, these expectations for everybody to do everything the exact same way, right? And when a person doesn't do things the exact same way that we would do them, we shun them. Um, sometimes we end up being, um, I might not wanna use that word, but um, it can be a bit abusive, right? And, and maybe I notice it more because I was in a dysfunctional relationship and I understand when, you know, people are adamant about making you do it the way that they do it. So um, I just want to share with you all that if you don't quite know what to say on social media right now, it's okay, right? Um, I think it's very mature. I think it's very wise that you spend some time collecting your thoughts and making a decision, one, about what you are going to say, and two, if you're gonna say anything at all on social media. I think it's really, really wise because a lot of people vomit, I'm gonna use that word, a lot of people vomit up things um, before they really, really put any thought into it. Um, so I wanted to relieve some of you of that if that's what you're feeling, if you're like, well, you know, I kind of feel obligated to say something. Everybody's saying, you know, if if I'm black, I need to say this. Or if I'm of another, listen, gather your thoughts if you need to before um, you say anything. If you say anything on social media. Um, one of the things I know about um, positioning is... It can be done in so many different ways. Like help can be done in so many different ways and everybody's you know, way of helping is just not going to be the same. So um, my first piece of advice for you is to get delivered from people. That would be my first piece of advice for you to get delivered from people. And if you do want to um, find some way that you can help connect with someone that you trust, and then ask them how you can be of help. And then, <clears throat> if what they are suggesting for you to do, you're not comfortable with, then, then you're not obligated. You, I'm sorry, you just are not obligated in that way. It's, it's a lot of ways during this time that um, you could be of help. But I want to say this because I don't think that people realize that there are some single moms out here who... Um, some of their fear is being able to protect their home during a time like this. I mean, they, they're still trying to figure out how they're going to take care of what they already have. I'm not talking about financially. I'm just talking about from a pr protection um, standpoint. And, uh, you know, so there may not be a male figure around or a male in the home. And that changes the dynamics of responsibility for people. So I just want us to be a little more careful with our words when we're on social media, um, you know, kind of throwing people under the bus or acting as if we don't understand 
when in actuality, in actuality we're just trying to make people do things the way we want them to, to do it. Um, I don't think bullying is the answer. I don't think it helps people who may be dealing with things emotionally. Um, and I don't feel that um, it really changes anything. If, if you have people who uh, are feeling pressured and, and forced, you know, when maybe if they had a little time to process everything, um, they would figure out their space and their place if they chose to do it at all. But some people are feeling hopeless during this time. Some don't know what they can do. Some don't know what to say. Uh, again, some are single moms. Some are dealing with um, pain already that stems long before today, and it just feels like it's being uh, rehashed all over again. But I wanted to share with you guys to give yourself permission to um, get off of social media if you need to. Um, during this time, I think you really have to be really, really mindful about the time and space that you're you're spending up here. Um, I'm gonna say this again, get you something to plant, put a seed in the ground and manage it and take care of it. It's been an amazing piece of therapy for, uh, for me in my home. Gardening has been, you know, if you're looking for uh, something to do. Uh, if you have a community that you can actually talk to and express all of your feelings without feeling pressured to to do it on um, social media. And for those of you who do feel led to speak up, then do that, right? I feel we all play um, a part and a role, um, but I, I, I'm here for those who feel overwhelmed um, with it all. And I think some of the overwhelm is obligation. I think some of the overwhelm is because they don't know what the future holds. And I just want to tell you that no matter where you're at right now in your life, you can always change it. I promise, it doesn't matter if you feel you're at your lowest low, um, if you feel that things just aren't quite working out for you. And I know you may hear me say this all the time and you're like, Miss Kenya, it's just not that simple. But I promise you, if you change your mind, every everything that you look at, um, everything that you think about, it'll change. Now, changing your mind really happens in one moment, but maintaining that change state of mind is something that you'll have to do every single day, right? It doesn't, you know, like you can change your mind in a moment. It doesn't, you can change your whole life in one moment because you changed your mind in that moment. However, it is a consistent um, retraining of your thoughts all the time. And you have to be so intentional about, you know, what it is that you're thinking, what it is that you're looking at. One, you got to be aware. You got to sit and say, what is the thing that's triggering me, right? I want you guys to do that. For those of you who are feeling, you know, emotionally drained, I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to write down your feelings. Write it out. What you feel is triggering you during this particular time. And then I want you to look at your list and say, run the serenity, you know, filter it through the serenity prayer. God, give me the, the grace to change the things. I, I don't, you know, remember how to say it fully, but ask God to give you the grace to look at what you can change and then the wisdom to know the difference in the things that you can't, right? So filter all of the things that are triggering you emotionally down. And if it's something that you can eliminate looking at, if you can eliminate connecting to for a while, then do that. Because one thing you won't be able to do is pour from an empty cup. You can't pour from an empty cup. So as much as you want to um, be everything to everyone, it's impossible um, until you fill your own cup. Um, I feel we have an obligation to have a vision that's bigger than just ourselves. Um, but I feel that a huge part of being able to serve in any capacity um, is based on you filling up your own cup. So I spend probably, and I, listen, I know everybody doesn't have the same amount of time freedom that I have. Um, I'm, I'm aware of that, right? I spend about six to seven hours a day 
training my brain, like literally. So even when my daughter was in school, on the way back from school, I'm listening to trainings. I had a little over a 20 minute ride. Um, when I go to pick her up, I'm listening to it again. That's 40 minutes. I get up four or five o'clock in the morning. I spend my first two hours praying, listening to trainings, meditating. Um, my lunch breaks. Now when I'm out in the garden, I have my, um, I don't have it here, but I'll have my headset on and I'm listening to training. I know everyone doesn't have this amount of time, but guys, before I had like the time freedom that I have now, anytime I got in the car and my daughter wasn't in the car with me where we were having conversation, anytime I got a break, um, it was playing in my car, things that would retrain my brain, things that would keep me focused on where it is that I desire to go. Um, one thing I want you to do is to know that if it's something that you don't want to see, don't say it. If you don't want to see it, don't say it. So if it's lack and uncertainty, if you don't want to see it, don't say it. Because part of training your brain is also what you're saying to yourself. It's also what you're letting, you know, come through your ear gate, your heart gate, your eye gates. That's, that's a part of, you know, what impacts us and what drains, you know, our cup, which makes it, um, very difficult to serve, to give, to, to even have the right things um, to say when it's time to say something, if you're going to say anything. Um, personal economy is really important to me. I won't stop talking about that during this particular time because I believe that it positions us differently. I believe that some of the concerns on top of you know everything that's going on is normally money. It's normally money because it, it takes care of food, clothes, shelter, things of that nature. I'm always pushing for people to go beyond what it is uh, that they need in their basic needs so that we are able to give on a different level um, when the need comes, right? Uh, but for now, I just want you guys to know that you can't pour from an, an empty cup. Spend some time. Spend some time filling up your your soul with things that align you know with your with your spirit it's everything it's everything you owe it to yourself to get up early or go to bed a little bit later and spend that time on you many of us are being inundated with a lot of um trauma <laughs> during the season a lot of trauma during the season and if you don't spend that time this is why people explode um if you don't spend that time refilling your cup right your your emotional health is super important it's important and if that means you need to get off of social media then do that do that i shared earlier one of the best things i could have ever done was to get delivered from people meaning when I get a truth on the inside of my heart, it doesn't mean I'm not open to hearing other things, but I'm okay with my truth, <laughs> right? I'm okay with my truth. I'm not sitting around anymore. Well, what are they gonna think? Well, I'm gonna do this so that it'll look, no, I'm not. And that's what's going on with a whole lot of people feeling obligated to things they don't feel prepared for. I see people, um, expecting people to speak up and then I see people saying you know I don't I don't know what to say people don't know some people don't know what to say some people that's you know not their assignment they can't even put those things into words to express you know how they're feeling or how they feel things should be do not feel obligated do not feel obligated if you do feel obligated and you don't know what to say take your time <laughs> take your time Take your time so that you can speak with wisdom if, if you decide to or whatever you want to do to contribute. It doesn't have to be on social media. Now, for some people, that's their platform. If, if you watch, that is what they've been assigned to and called to the entire time. They're seasoned for it. They're seasoned for it, right? So that's my take. I just wanted to hopefully um, 
give you all some freedom with whatever you may be feeling pressured by and just let you know that um, there's no lack of anything. And I'm not just saying that there's no lack of anything that you need. We live in an abundant world and not because of the government or anything like that, but because of the God that we serve. Um, the world has a way of doing things. And this is for you all who are believers. And I mean, for anyone in actuality, but I say believers because we read it all the time. We read the world all the time. Um, God has a system that will take care of us. And if you can get grounded and centered in that belief and the promises of God, it will relieve some of the stress that you're feeling. I promise you. Is it easy? Not always, but it's even harder when you're inundated with things that are causing you to feel emotionally drained. Take you some time if you need to. But I promise you, guys, I, my routine, this is kind of how things go for me when I'm manifesting different things in my life because God has given us the power um, to get wealth. And my definition of wealth is spiritual, tangible, and well-being. I believe that wealth is a three-part um, scenario. But when I'm manifesting something in my life, I focus on that thing, right? And I continue to repeat the promises of God about that particular situation area in my life i find scripture that aligns with it i make sure all of my words are in alignment with what it is that i say i desire remember i said if you don't want to see it don't say it if you don't want to see it don't say it because words are seeds and some of us ain't ready for the harvest we're just not grace for for the harvest so i am really really particular like if I know that something is causing me to feel sad or uncertain I'll go find it in scripture or for me I have an affirmation for every area of my life so I have an affirmation for six different areas of my life I have affirmations that I can go to and it's so powerful because after I continuously repeat those things over and over and over again it begins to drown out what is not true because everything that goes against the word of God is not true. If you are if you are a believer, right? If you believe fully in the word, everything that goes against the word of God is not true. It's not the truth. And see, so many of us are riding the fence with so many different things. I think that's a huge issue um, for us too, right? Um, I don't want to go too deep. I'm not, I'm probably, I know that I'm a little more, uh, I know that my emotions are, are higher than normal, like most, because of everything that's um, going on, but also because of what I'm seeing, you know, on my timeline that kind of disappoints me, but I'm not surprised because in all honesty, the people that I see who are, you know, like bullying people, to do things the way they normally do it. They were bullying before this situation. They were manipulating, they were bullying, they was doing petty stuff before this. You know, it's just like on another level now. So it's not that I'm surprised, but I see the impact that it could have on someone who doesn't have the tool, who hasn't, you know, gotten to a space in their life where they're delivered from people. Um, it could really, really impact them. So I'm up here specifically tonight for those of you who are feeling pressured during this time and you don't know what to do. I'm just giving you, not that I'm the person to give you permission, but give yourself permission to, to be okay if you don't know what to say or you don't know how to contribute or you don't know what to do at this time. And if you need some time, you know, to think before you speak because a lot of people aren't. A lot of people aren't, aren't going past what their expectations are um, in this. Um, and, and it's easy to do because when we're on assignment, you know we're in our lane we're in our lane and um, it can sometimes be difficult to see things from a, a different perspective during that time but for those of you who have been feeling hopeless right if you <clears throat> don't know what to do don't know what to say some of you are single moms you're worried of safety and security is always an issue for women period but even especially as a single mom I too am a single mom 
Um, and some of you, some are dealing with stuff that came up before this, now all of this. And I just want you to give yourself permission to take care of yourself, um, whatever that looks like. If it means, you know, getting off of social media, not watching uh, the news um, or, or news stations, or <clears throat> I give you guys an assignment or an action step to write down the things you feel are triggering you during this time so that you're aware. You know, like, oh, okay, you know what? That triggers me. I'm not going over there, right? Um, if there's people that you need to um, delete, that you need to snooze, or whatever it is that you need to do, listen, you can't pour from an empty cup. And you got to get to the point where you can at least manage for yourself, right? Your, your emotional health is, is important. And I'm probably all over the place. Um, with this is a couple other things that I, I wanted to say but as I I think I wrote it um, when I was still in my feelings so um, I'm not gonna share it I don't think it's really appropriate for for this but take care of yourself guys take some time to um, read pray take a walk um, disconnect if you need to Find a source that um, gives you hope. Find a source that, that gives you hope. Um, for those of you who this is your assignment, then do, do your thing. I think everybody in the body of Christ has different assignments. Um, not think, I know. And everybody is graced for their particular assignment but we're all fitly joined together. And so I don't think it's a time to discredit uh, the assignment of other people because it's different from yours. I don't think it's fair to attempt to make people feel less than. Um, and if we are so woke, that shouldn't be something that we, we like making um, statements like we're wondering why when, no, if we woke, like we say we woke, we understand that people have different assignments. Uh, a lot of times people are just expecting people to do things the way they would do it. That's my take, you guys. Um, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself in this particular season. Um, do what you can to be of assistance with what is transpiring in our world space, but decide what it is that you can and can't do make make a decision like what's going to be my breaking point am i in a, a an emotional emotionally healthy space to to even contribute in that way right now right that's my take you guys have a, a blessed one remember you can't pour from an empty from an empty 